Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be all about the return on invested capital or the ROIC for short. Now, if you've never heard of the return on invested capital before, then you definitely want to be listening to this video because it is such an important component of the long-term investing strategy that I'm talking about on this channel. If you want to analyze businesses and be a confident and consistent investor, then this measure, the return on invested capital is one that you want to to watch very closely. Uh, and of course, if you have heard of the return on invested capital, but you just want to learn more about it and maybe dive a little bit deeper into the interpretation of what it means for a particular company, then you of course are also in the correct place. Now, before we get into talking about the return on invested capital, how to interpret it, as well as go through a complete example, uh, you might want to go ahead and go into the description below and download my free stock analysis spreadsheet, which includes a sheet within that spreadsheet that talks specifically about the return on invested capital. And uh, it's completely free, so why not? Who doesn't love free stuff? Uh, and it's going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to calculating numbers throughout the entire stock analysis approach. Uh, but of course, specifically, we're talking about the return on invested capital in this video. And in the working example that I'm going to show later in the video, I will be going through and showing you how to use my spreadsheet to specifically interpret the data when it comes to the return on on invested capital. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Before I get into showing you the formula and starting to crunch some numbers when it comes to the return on invested capital, I think that it's important to talk about what is the core philosophy around the return on invested capital. Let's lay the foundation so that we have the right mindset when we're coming to looking at this number. What does it mean? What does it actually tell us about a particular business? And that core philosophy is that it tells us how effective management is at reinvesting profits within the business. The way that you should think about this is we're trying to assess how skillful a management team is at reinvesting profits within the business. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. So when a company produces profit, so it has its revenue that comes in from its customers, its or its clients, it then has its expenses that it pays. So it has, it has to pay its employees or the cost of the goods or marketing expenses and so on and so forth. What is left over is profit. And that profit then needs to be reinvested back into the business into long-term assets. So for example, if you had a restaurant chain and you were the manager of a restaurant chain, and there's some profit left over after the normal operations, then that manager needs to decide, am I going to build out some more restaurants? And with that decision comes, where am I going to put those restaurants? How big are they going to be? What is the design going to look like? And then they have all of the other decisions they need to make, such as marketing and research and development and pricing and all of that other stuff. But essentially the collection of their decisions about where to put that money into long-term assets will impact the cash flows that that business can produce in the future. And the return on invested capital shows us the relationship between the profits that the business is producing and the amount of capital, the amount of profit that they've had to reinvest in order to generate those profits. So let's now talk about the formula itself. How do we go out and actually calculate the return on invested capital? Uh, now my spreadsheet will do all of this for you and I'll show you how to do this in my spreadsheet later in the video. Uh, but if you do want to know how the formula works, then this is what it is. And before I show you the formula that I personally use, uh, you need to be aware that the return on invested capital can be calculated in a lot of different ways. So if you're looking on a website such as Yahoo Finance or some other kind of data website, they might show a figure for return on invested capital that is very different to the one that I'm going to show you today because uh, most of them will use a profit figure from the income statement, whereas I'm going to be using a cash figure, which I think is a better representation of how much cash the business generates for its shareholders. So the formula is pretty simple. It has three components. The formula is cash flow for owners divided by long term debt plus equity. So it is a pretty simple formula. There's only three components cash flow for owners, long term debt, and equity. Uh, and uh, if you want to know where you can get these from, long term debt and equity are both figures that you will find on the balance sheet. So that's one of the major financial statements for a company. And you can find this data on a range of different websites, such as Yahoo Finance or quickfs.net is the website I use to get this data. Uh, or you 
can just go directly to the company's investor relations page, find the latest annual report, and in that annual report, you will be able to find the balance sheet within their other financial statements. But there's really three major components, and the only component that you won't be able to find on any website is the cash flow for owners figure, which is a figure that we calculate and estimate based on a few other figures that we find in the financial statements. So uh, I'm not going to talk in depth about cash flow for owners in this video. So if you want to learn more about it, I have a video dedicated to explaining what it is, why we use it and how to calculate it. So go check that video out uh, after this video, or you can pause the video right now and watch it if you want to uh, learn about that first, but that will be linked down in the description below. So as promised, I'm now going to go through a full working example with the company Apple Incorporated to show you how I find the data, how I enter it into the spreadsheet, and then more importantly, how I interpret what the spreadsheet is showing us for the return on invested capital over time. So let's jump over to my computer and go through and show you that exactly. All right. So once you've gone through and made a copy of my spreadsheet, uh, it will look exactly like this. So um, basically, I'm not going to show you how to enter in all of the data today. I have a video dedicated to that on my channel. So go just go on my channel and search spreadsheet and click on the latest video and that'll show you how to enter in all of the data. Uh, but uh, for today, we're just going to be focusing on the return on invested capital sheet. So you can see here we have our three inputs, which are cash flow for owners, long term debt and equity. So we're going to need to find those three, uh, three things. And then this capital figure is a combination of long term debt and equity. So we don't need to do that. But You'll notice that all of these squares except for long-term debt are grayed out, which means you don't want to change them in here. It means you need to change them over here. So you can see we've got equity here and then cash flow for owners we need to calculate. So um, the easiest thing you can do is head over to a website called quickfs.net. It's a free website. You just need to make an account, uh, but it's completely free and you can type in the ticker symbol. So we're going to be looking at uh, Apple in this example. And then up over here on the side, you can see we can click the drop down menu and find the balance sheet. So uh, the first thing we need is we need shareholder equity from uh, 2010 up until 2019. So uh, that's the first one we want to grab, which is right here, I believe. So from here, um, and sometimes it doesn't let you grab the last one, but I'll just remember what it is. Perfect. So that's been entered in there. Uh, the next thing we need is uh, operating cash flow. So uh, head over to the cash flow statement. And uh, the operating cash flow is this one here, cash from operations. That's this line here. Um, and I'm just going to copy it from my other Apple spreadsheet just to save me some time. Um, but you want to copy that from QuickFS uh, and paste it in here. And then you're going to need maintenance capital expenditure. Now, I didn't explain maintenance capex in this video. That is explained in the cash flow for owners video, which is linked in the description below. So go check that video out if you want to learn how to calculate maintenance capital expenditure. Uh, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy it over. And you will see that we now have equity entered and it has calculated cash flow for owners for us over the past 10 years. So if we head back over to the return on invested capital, sheet, you can see that everything is filled in except this long-term debt line. So you want to head back to QuickFS, go down to the balance sheet, and you can find the line where it says long-term debt, and you want to copy these numbers over here. And if there's a little dash, it means that they had zero long-term debt. So that's pretty easy. Again, I'm just going to copy it over from this spreadsheet uh, in the interest of time. So once you've done that, you will notice a couple of things. The first is that we've now got the return on invested capital for each of the past 10 years calculated out for us. We can see that in uh, 2010, it was 33.5 for Apple. And that has kind of declined a little bit towards uh, 30.82 um, in 2019. Now, uh, before we have a look at this chart, you can jump back over to the data input tab. And another thing that this spreadsheet will have calculated for you is the one year and the 10 year average return on invested capital. So again, we can see their 10 year average is just under 33%. And that has slowed to 31% uh, in the last year. 
Now, coming back over to the return on invested capital sheet, uh, we now have this graph. So what are we looking for when it comes to this graph? Well, there's three major things that I'm looking for. The first is that we want to see that the return on invested capital is consistently above 10%. So 10% is my minimum benchmark. Generally, I want to see it in the 15 to 20% range, but my minimum benchmark is 10%. And Apple certainly fulfills that requirement. They are at the least generating, uh, well, generally speaking, about a 30% return on the investments that they've made in long-term assets within their business. The second thing that I'm looking for is I want this number to be growing over time or at the very least remaining consistent. We certainly don't want to see this number declining over time. If the number is declining, if this graph is going down, then it indicates that management is getting less effective at investing within the business over time. So that means their older investments were better than their newer ones. We want the opposite of that. We want their newer investments to be better than their older ones, indicating that they are getting better at investing within the business. Now for Apple, uh, it's not improving over time, but it is remaining fairly stable at around 30%. Uh, and yeah, we can see that by just looking at the graph. We can see it by looking at these numbers. Most of them hover around 30%. And we can also see that their 10-year average is 30%, which is in line with their latest number. So, so far, so good for Apple. The only thing I would like to see is if this was growing over time, improving, but it's less likely in Apple because Apple is quite a large business that's a slow grower at this point. So it's less likely that they're going to be making investments that are generating a higher return than their previous investments. You will more likely see a growing ROIC an ROIC that has this graph going up over time, you're more likely to see that in higher growth companies with more investment opportunities available. And then the final thing we want to see is we want to see that not only are they generating a high return on their investments, we want to see that they are consistently growing their investments within the business because some businesses have a consistent return on invested capital, maybe like Apple here, but they are not reinvesting any more profits. All of their profits are being distributed to shareholders as a dividend. So what does that mean? Well, it means they are generating a high return on their assets, but they're not making new investments that are going to grow the profits of the business. That means that they're probably not going to grow in the future if they're not reinvesting. They're just kicking all of the profits back to the shareholders as a dividend. So as long-term investors looking for companies that are going to be compounders, that are going to grow substantially on the stock market, we need them to have a high return on invested capital while also reinvesting a substantial amount of their profits back into the business. So how do we do this? Well, uh, there's a little trick you can do with my spreadsheet. I'm going to show you how to add this uh, because it's not currently a feature, but it will be in the future. But if you come over to this cell here, which is L5, and you just hit equals, and you want to click the 2019 number for capital, and you want to do subtract, and you want to subtract the 2010 number. Um, now, you'll get a warning. Just click don't uh, show this again for five minutes. So you can do that and click OK. Then what you want to do is you want to click on uh, this cell again, L5, and you want to come to this little box in the corner and drag this up two cells so that it calculates it for the two cells above for long-term debt and equity. And then finally, for the cell above that, you want to hit equals and type in sum, and you want to do a sum of all of these cells here for cash flow for owners. And I'll explain exactly what we just did uh, right now. So basically what we're seeing here is that over the past 10 years, Apple has increased their long-term debt by $92 billion. So they've taken on $92 billion more than they had 10 years ago. Then they've also increased their equity, which generally comes from reinvested profits by just under $43 billion. So they've increase their equity, which for the most part will come from reinvested cash flows, reinvested profits. And then the combination of both of those is the total amount of growth in their long-term investments, in their capital. So uh, Apple is certainly a business that is consistently reinvesting some of their profits uh, in order to grow their cash flows. And you can see that their reinvestments have grown their cash flows from about 16 billion in 2010, all the way up to 56 billion in 2019. 
Now, this last number here, which says $474 billion, all of these are in millions, uh, if you're wondering why I'm, I'm talking in billions. So, uh, this number is $475 billion. That number represents the total amount of cash that was left over after the normal operations of the business that Apple could have reinvested back into the business. So that is the total potential amount of cash flow that they could have reinvested. But what you'll notice is that they only grew their equity by about $43 billion, which indicates that they only reinvested a small portion of their earnings while they used the remaining of their earnings to pay dividends and to do share repurchases. So that's how you should think about this. You want to be comparing the total amount of cash that they generated to the growth in equity, which will come from them reinvesting some of this profit number. So in Apple's case, they do have a strong ROIC. It's remaining stable over time and they are reinvesting back into the business, but they are not reinvesting all of their profits and they're not reinvesting even half of their profits. They're only reinvesting a small portion back into the business, and most of their cash flow is being distributed to shareholders in the form of share repurchases, buying back their own stock or through dividends. So that is all for this video, guys. And I hope this provided some more clarity in terms of what the return on invested capital is, what its philosophy is, what the formula is, how you can calculate it, and then how you can interpret the data to see if management has been skillful at reinvesting their profits within the business. But um, I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you have any questions after this video, I'm sure there's plenty of questions that you still have that you're scratching your head. So uh, go down to the comment section and leave a question down there. And I will be answering questions as this video goes live. Live. So uh, if you're quick, then I'll be able to answer your questions uh, right after this video goes live. But other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, then the best thing you can do is hit the subscribe button so that you can join the team and get notified when new videos are being posted. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next video.